uh, in a series uh, called Reentry. Uh, if you were not here last week, uh, go back and listen to the message either on podcasts or on YouTube. Uh, we are going to be in this series all month, and uh, today we're, we're we're going into the next uh, phase of it. I actually uh, thought I was going to be preaching one message, and uh, the Holy Spirit told me last night right around midnight that I was going too fast, that, that I was trying to cover too much. Uh, and so um, uh, he gave me another direction to go and, and to specifically uh, uh, kind of target in on something that we're going to talk about today. Now, uh, I want to I pr- prep you, okay? And the way that I want to prep you is I, I want you to know that this month we're doing some, some pretty significant lifting. We're doing a lot of uh, heavy emotional lifting. And uh, so I need you to be brave enough uh, to not just let the emotions come up, uh, but uh, beyond the emotions, I need you to make some decisions that will actually help to change your life. I think a lot of times uh, 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 what, what, what church has been successful at doing is getting people to the point of emotion, but not past that emotion to actually make the life changing decisions that, that help them uh, uh, for, for a, a long and permanent period of time. So uh, uh, I just wanted to give you that framework as we get into the message. If you have your Bibles, I want you to go to the book of Exodus chapter number two. The book of Exodus chapter number two. Again, the series is re-entry. Uh, what happens when you step into uh, uh, a room or a, a, a relationship, a, a, a job, a, uh, a time that seems very, very familiar, but, but everything's different because you're different. Uh, we're, we're, we're talking about reentries. Uh, Exodus chapter number two, I'm going to read the 11th verse through the 25th verse. And uh, this is the story of Moses. If, if you've never heard about the story of Moses, and all you know about him is splitting the, uh, the Red Sea. There, there's so much more to this particular person uh, than just uh, the spiritual heroics that God did through him. Uh, he has an, a, a pretty interesting narrative, uh, starting in chapter number two, uh, with uh, the Pharaoh of that time uh, not knowing the God that uh, uh, Joseph served and not knowing the covenant relationship the previous Pharaoh had, Uh, with Joseph and the children of Israel. Uh, He saw how much they were multiplying. He wanted to try to control that. Uh, And one of his ways to control that was to kill uh, all the the boy babies. Uh, This uh, particular heroic mother that we talk about today um, uh, is is Jochebed, Moses' mom, who puts him in a basket and, and floats him down the river. He is retrieved by Pharaoh's daughter uh, and brought into the Egyptian palace and way of life. Uh, And then this is where our narrative picks up uh, in verse number 11. This is after he has been adopted and has grown up uh, in Pharaoh's home. Says this in verse number 11. Many years later, when Moses had grown up, he went out to visit his own people, the Hebrews, And he saw how hard they were forced to work. During his visit, he saw an Egyptian beating one of his fellow Hebrews. After looking in all directions to make sure no one was watching, Moses killed the Egyptian and hid the body in the sand. The next day, when Moses went out to visit his people again, he saw two Hebrew men fighting. Why are you beating up your friend? Moses said to the one who had started the fight. The man replied, Who appointed you to be our prince and judge? Are you going to kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? I guess Moses didn't look that good. (laughs) Then Moses was afraid, thinking, everyone knows what I did. Sure enough, Pharaoh heard what happened, and he tried to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in the land of Midian. When Moses arrived in Midian, he sat down beside a well. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters who came as usual to draw water 
and fill the water, to, to draw water and fill the water troughs of their father's flocks. But some other shepherds came and chased them away. So Moses jumped up and rescued the girls from the shepherds. Then he drew water for their flocks. When the girls returned to Ruel, uh, their father, uh, he asked, why are you back so soon today? An Egyptian rescued us from the shepherds, they answered. And then he drew water for us and watered our flocks. Then where is he? The father asked, why did you leave him there? Invite him to come and eat with us. Moses accepted the invitation and he settled there with him. In time, Ruel gave Moses his daughter Zipporah to be his wife. Later, she gave birth to a son and Moses named him Gershom for he explained, I have been a foreigner in a foreign land. Years passed and the king of Egypt died, but the Israelites continued to groan under their burden of slavery. They cried out for help and their cry rose up to God. <laughs> if you're taking notes on this message, the title of this message is Don't Leave Yourself. Don't leave yourself. <laughs> Let's pray real quick. Holy Spirit, help us not to leave us. Amen. So we started a pretty transparent conversation last week. A, a conversation that I believe changes uh, my uh leadership style and, and, and the way that I pass with this church forever, hopefully it changes the way that, that you feel about how you're going to live your life forever and how we do life together uh, at Embassy City Church. Last week I told you that, that the Holy Spirit spoke to me in Australia and uh, revealed to me that the, my, my, my leadership style and the way that I have been leading this church since we planted it uh, was basically uh, all based and influenced off of spiritual trauma that I had uh, seen and been exposed to over 23 years of ministry. I had uh, Nancy Houston, my friend, come with me and talk about what happens to the brain when you've been traumatized. And when you've been traumatized, you, you wind up uh, uh, in these uh, uh, stages where you can literally end up fighting, fleeing, freezing, or folding. And as a result of that, if you get into that cycle and never get out, then all of your relationships are built off of trauma and not built off of freedom. It's the best recap I can give you uh, to last week. As I began to think about this and the Holy Spirit began to talk to me about this, what I began to understand is that if we are going to be who God has called us to be, we have to go back uh, to those places that have hurt us. We have to go back to those places where we have been traumatized, abused, neglected, rejected, all the acted, right? Whatever they are. And, and we have to be brave enough to go there so we can have everything he wants us to have in this season. Moses is a compelling figure, far beyond the Red Sea, far beyond uh, walking them through the wilderness, far beyond all the miracles that were displayed uh, through his life. Uh, his backstory is rich and it is delicious. <laughs> Moses is uh, this, 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 this baby boy who uh, has an incredible mom, who has enough faith to believe that there is more uh, to this child than, than meets the eye. And she is not going to settle uh, for, for him being slaughtered before the potential, whatever it is on the inside of him, is able to come out. And so she protects him. She puts him uh, in a little basket and floats him down the river. And out of all the people that could find this child, Pharaoh's daughter finds this child and draws him out of the water and doesn't just go, oh, whose baby is this? She, she has such an affinity for this child that she adopts the baby on sight. Isn't it amazing that God can put you on the heart of somebody and that they could just fall in love with you before they even know anything about you? I believe in divine relationships, the kind of relationships where God connects people even before you have a real clear conversation. There's just something that connects 
heart to heart, spirit to spirit, and you find yourself in a, 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 a life that you never thought you would be in because God just strategically or- orchestrated it. Anybody beside me has some divine relationships? You just know, God, you did that. You hooked me up. I was not even praying for this person. I wasn't smart enough to think about this person. But thank you for bringing them into my life, because if I wouldn't have found them, I'd be crazy. (laughs) Moses has this divine hookup, and he winds up inside of Pharaoh's daughter's house. His sister has been closely watching the events unfold. The woman who is not a mother herself needs to make sure that the baby is fed. And this sister of Moses appears out of nowhere with this great solution. Can I go find you somebody? And she's like, yes, please. And she goes to get her mama. And so her mama still gets to nurse this child. But this child is now growing up with with, with two Uh, different identities. He he has an identity that connects him to the covenant of Abraham. That is his his birthright. That's the the identity he was born with. He is a Hebrew. He is an Israelite. And this is the identity that he is born with, but he is raised in an Egyptian culture. He is raised in a culture that's antithetical to the culture that he has a covenant with. And as he is raised up in this, at some point as he becomes a young man, there is a dichotomy that's living on the inside of him. There there, there are two different things at war within each other internally. Because while he is a Hebrew by blood, he has been enjoying the benefits of being an Egyptian by environment. And because he's enjoying uh, 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 these, 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 these uh, environmental benefits, it's causing him to be at war within himself because he knows deep down inside who he's truly called to be and who he's truly called to live with. But the benefits of where he was raised have been very, very good to him, and so he finds himself torn. Anybody beside me ever been torn? Have you ever had one side of you that knows the right thing to do or, or, or the right place to be, but there's another side of you that has just been become so familiar with your surroundings and your territory that you, it doesn't, you just don't know where to be anymore? You're just kind of like, ooh, I mean, I know I need to be over there, but over here, I just kind of like it over here. It's really comfortable. Over here is cozy over here. This, this over here speaks to a, a place on the inside of me that this other spot doesn't. And I don't know how long he had been dealing with this internal struggle. But, but one day what has been going on in him internally, he sees getting played out externally. And when he sees it getting played out externally, he gets triggered. Have you ever been dealing with something internally and and something externally triggers it? You you haven't been talking to anybody about it, but then you watch a movie. And if it's the right kind of movie, you're like, hmm. Mm. Oh, boy, my allergies. Oh, must be the cedar. The pollen count must be high today. (laughs) Or, 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 Or you're scrolling through social media and you just wind up angry at a post. It's a post. And you have found yourself immediately triggered. It's because something is resonating with you internally. If it can get to you externally, it's because there's something in you internally that has not been resolved. And because it hasn't been resolved, you can be triggered. He's triggered. 
And he sees a Hebrew and an Egyptian, and they get into an altercation. And what has been on the inside is now being displayed on the outside, and what he sees on the outside, he doesn't like. And so since he cannot reconcile what to do on the inside, he decides to do something about it on the outside, and he raises up and kills the side of him that he likes the least. He despises it. And he goes in there and he tries to, oh, 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 and he looks for all of them. And he kills the Egyptian. And he kills the Egyptian and buries him in the sand. Now, he thinks life is great. Until the next day. I mean, not like a week later. The next day, two Hebrews are fighting. And he wants to stop that part. Because when the Hebrew was fighting the Egyptian, that represented the, type, the, 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 the internal struggle that couldn't be reconciled. So he kills the side that, that, that he really despises. But when he sees two Hebrews fighting each other, he resents that too because that shows that there's no harmony on the inside of him. He can't bring himself to have peace with himself. So he said, stop that fight and what are you doing? And they said, who are you to talk, talk to us about this? What you, what you gonna do? You gonna kill us like you killed that Egyptian yesterday? He was like, ah! <laughs> now, let's just go a little bit slower. Let's just go a little bit slower, okay? And here's why I wanna go slower. If there's two people fighting and you jump in and kill one, I think that was a witness. <laughs> I mean, let's just, let's just slow down on the narrative real quick. It didn't say, Moses waited until after dark, creeped up on him when he was getting his trash, and smite the, the Egyptian. No, he broke up the fight and killed dude. The dude that got saved was like, thank you. <laughs> Went back into his house, he was like, hey man, this Egyptian dude, he killed. The word got out. And the next day, Moses is like, huh? Ah! I didn't know you was going to find out. And then he, 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 he's kind of like, okay, I, I guess it's cool. I'll just act cool. I murdered somebody, but I'm at cool. And then Pharaoh finds out. And Pharaoh puts a hit on Moses. And, and, and Moses runs for his life. He, he, he doesn't run for cover in Egypt. He, he, he runs out of Egypt. And, and, and when he runs out of Egypt, he runs to Midian and, 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 and decides to kind of to hang out there. And, and as some women were coming to, to feed their flocks, some shepherds uh, uh, came around and, and they, were, they were trying to run them off. And, and Moses rises up again, second time, in a very brief amount of time, that, 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 that Moses rises up again to be a rescuer. It was in his DNA to be a rescuer. He was always called to be a rescuer. But, but, but he didn't wait on his call to do the rescuing. He kept jumping in front of God's call to do something that he wanted him to do just not out of the season that he told him to do it in. And he runs off the shepherds and, and, and the, the women are thankful. And they tell their father and their father says, well, bring that guy here. And when he comes there, he realizes I, I, I can be safe here. I, I don't have to be a Hebrew or an Egyptian. Here. I, I don't have to ever face my past again. Here. I, I don't have to struggle with, uh, with the identity crisis I've been having here. I, I, I can be a, another type of person. I, I, I can reinvent myself. 
I, I've gone away to find me. And he marries Zipporah and settles down. I, I, I wonder if Moses shows us a little bit of a glimpse of how we respond in the same type of situations. Moses used all the F words. Y'all are counting like, how many are there? <laughs> but Moses uses all of the F words. And it's the ones that, that, that I mentioned earlier, the ones that we talked about last week. He, 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 he fights. There's flight. There's freeze. And there's fold. Would you say those with me? Fight. Flight. Freeze. Fold. Again, fight. Flight, freeze, fold. Again, fight, flight, freeze. Get a bop now. Flight, fight, freeze. Come on now. Fight. Use your F words. Fight. Okay, you got them now, all right? I want you to have these now because we talked about last week that, that, that you... you, you some in in, 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 in in certain situations, you, you need these to, to, for survival, but you're not supposed to live there. You, you, you need that, that, that fighting part temporarily in situations where there's danger. You need flight in other seasons. You, you might need to freeze in, in, in some time, but you need to get unfrozen at some point. Sometimes you need to fold, but you need to unfold. But, but I want to I walk you through the, the, the four times uh, that, that Moses used these F words, because he used all four of them. And here's the first one. The first one was he fought during conflict. Because he couldn't reconcile on the inside of himself what was going on, he wound up being a fighter externally trying to put out what he could not resolve internally. We, we, we took a poll last week. Where are all my fighters at? Be honest, you, you, you're a fighter. You're, you're like, nah, ah, 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 I will fight you. L -l -let, me tell, let me tell you why you're so quick to fight other people. Because you refuse to fight the battle against yourself. That's why you're so quick to be defensive. That's why you're so quick to get angry. That's why you're so quick to have a comeback. That's why you're so quick to be cynical to be snappy, to be petty. Because there's a fighter on the inside of you, but you're not fighting the right person. You, you, you would have less people to fight externally if you would go resolve what's happening internally. Moses, Moses wouldn't fight the right fight. I'm glad he was a fighter. I, I, I'm glad he rose up uh, uh, and felt the injustice that was going on between the, 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 the Hebrews and the Egyptians. But, but he was not to take matters into his own hands the way he did. And, and, and so in that fight, he leaves a piece of himself there. This is what happens when. When, 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 when we go through life and, 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 and traumatic events trigger us, we leave pieces of ourselves in places that they were never meant to stay. So Moses gets into this fight. He kills this Egyptian and he leaves a piece of himself there. Which brings us to the second thing that Moses did. He froze during confrontation. When he tries to confront and bring harmony to, to who he really wants to be, they say to him, who do you think you are? Are you going to kill us like you killed the Egyptians? And Moses, ha! Ah! He was confronted and he froze. Where, where are my freezers? What are people that freeze? Yeah, right? Ah! 
You get confronted, and you're like, I'll just stand real still. It'll be over in a minute. This abuse will be over in a minute. I'll just freeze. The quicker they get done, the quicker I can go back to being, the quicker I can go back to doing, the quicker I can go back to acting. We freeze. And every time we freeze, we, we, leave, we leave a piece of us in those moments. And we try to move on. The third thing that he did is that he fled from being killed. This is the flight mechanism. He finds out Pharaoh wants to kill him, and he runs for the hills. I'm out! <laughs> Peace! Not going to do this part. I am not going to stick around and face the consequences for my behavior. I'm out. I know that I was unfaithful to you and you caught me, but I'm out. We're not talking about this. I'm leaving. I know I've been late every day that I've got this job. But you know what? There's nothing wrong with me. It's, something's wrong with you. you just, why, why do you even care about time? I'm here, right? Didn't I show up? I know it was 920, but didn't I stay to 520? What's the problem? And, and, and so every time, every single time you need to face consequences, instead of you facing them, you just run from them. And every time you run, you leave a piece of yourself in the spot where you should have confronted yourself or others and faced up to the situation that you brought into the space. The fourth thing is that he folded his faith. He just folded it. He was like, you know what? I like Midian. It's nice over here. In Midian, I don't have to be Hebrew or Egyptian. In Midian, I don't have to be who I've been a, 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 a covenant person made to be, nor do I have to be who I've been raised to be. I like Midian. M Midian allows me to be somebody else. Have you ever heard somebody use th th this term? I have to go find myself. I, 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 I just need some time away from everybody because I have to go find myself. I'm on a journey. And I need to go find myself. And I'll be back once I find myself. And when I find myself and I come back, Ooh, you're going to love me, right? I'm going to go somewhere else and be somebody else. And, 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 and you know, I, I, I like this person. I'm, I, I like the person I am in Midian. I, I, he folded. He folded. I, I, don't have to, I don't have to be a rescuer here. I don't have to be a leader here. I don't have to be responsible here. No, 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 nobody remembers where I'm from here. Nobody cares about where I've been here. I like being here. I don't have to face myself here. I don't have to face the fact that I murdered somebody. I don't have to face the fact that, that, that I, I, I'm a Hebrew but grew up Egyptian. And that my people are being are being mistreated and 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 and, and put under duress. Uh, I, I, I like the fact that I could just be somebody else here. And so it brings us to the fifth thing, which is the most dangerous stage. He can no longer find himself. Listen to me. You cannot go on a journey to find yourself when you've left yourself. I will. You cannot go on a journey to find yourself when you've actually left 
yourself. <laughs> I'm going to go find me. And you get there and what you realize is you can't be you. You can only be a manufactured version of who you would like to be. But until you address the pain, the trauma, the experiences of where you've been, you will never be able to enjoy where you are. It's impossible. And we have people that, that, have, that have completely abandoned themselves, never addressed their pain, never addressed their, pro, their, their trauma, never addressed the, the, their bad behavior, and they just, they, they just keep on trying to be something. But, but, in, but then somebody digs deep, and they, you know what they do? Ha! Then they run. It's, it's why social media is such an intoxicating platform. Because I can be whoever I want to be. I can show you whatever I want to show you. I can filter this. I can crop this. I can take my time, and, and, and I'm going to take 17 pictures because I'm only going to use one. But just hit that thing. Just keep on hitting it. And I'll... <laughs> now, the one of them 82 pictures you get, I will choose the one that best represents me. When the truth of the matter is, you were all 88 of them. Who I'm coming for you. Woo! Lord have mercy. So, so, so what had happened was, you have to deal with the fact that when traumatized, you drop a piece of yourself. If, you, if you've been in a friendship and somebody violated your trust, you actually drop the trust there. And then you try to go into a new relationship, but guess what? Do you, do you notice something? You get into the new relationship, what can't you actually do? Because your trust is back here. You left it. You can't manufacture new trust. What you do is try to, you, you try to engineer a form of trust that's actually informed by the pain of being violated in your trust here. So, so it doesn't actually come out authentic. It comes out with a defense mechanism. I trust you to a point. You ain't gonna hurt me again. I bet you won't. I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I like people. I just don't hang out with them. I mean, I, I, I would get in an embassy city place, but you know, people be getting into your business too much. Guess who's talking? The hurt you that you left back here and haven't reconciled so you can't enjoy community here because you never reconciled there. You've been in a relationship and, and maybe somebody uh, 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 in the relationship uh, did you wrong and, and, and broke your heart. And so now you, you, you drop your love right there. You drop your love right there and you try to have a new relationship over here. But it's not even based off love anymore. You've just tried to engineer a version of love that's not authentic. So you're like, you know what? I like you. Like, we can hold hands. Like, we can go to the movies and stuff, but psh, no. Boy, bye. Nobody's ever getting that close again, right? Whoa, 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 what? what? You, you, you'll never be in a vibrant relationship again until you go back and pick up what you dropped here. Now, I'm saying the same thing over and over again, but I'm going to keep digging. Uh, 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 it, 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 could be, it, it could be something that you've done and you can't forgive yourself. So because you did it, you project that on everybody else. You stole something or you cheated. Or, 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 or you did something wrong, so now everybody you see is like, don't, uh-uh. All they're going to do is break your heart. 
But, that, but you did that. But instead of going back to face up to that thing and go, you know what? It was me. I messed up. I'm broken. And you know what? I did you wrong. And so I know that probably cost us our relationship. But um, I do need to get me back, though. I'm going to go brush this off with a little bit of therapy. Right? Not just an altar call. Because, see, all, all, an, all, all a really good sermon does is open up a can of worms. That's all, that's all a sermon does. It opens up a can of worms, and the Holy Spirit goes deep inside and points to something. The reason why we have altar calls is to give you an opportunity to go, that was me. <laughs> right? That's all it's for. And that's why I want you to be bold enough that when it's you, just come. Don't, you know, well, I would, but, you know, they with me. Bump them. You better get up here and get what you need. I'm just telling, I'm just telling you the truth. <laughs> I told y'all it's going to be different. I'm just telling you. But the altar call is for you to come up and go, God, you just popped open a can of worms, and I just hold it up before you, and would you, ooh, what do I do now? Okay, I need to call the church and, and set up a, a time to meet with somebody. And if, if okay, oh, the church only can go this far with this. I need real thing. Like, I'm, I'm really messed up. So um, I need people with letters behind their name. So <laughs> let me see if my insurance <laughs> will cover this. Okay? Right? Let, 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 let me see if I have a friend that I can do a barter system with them. I will buy you oatmeal if you just <laughs> walk me through something <laughs> for the next four months. R li listen, you, you have, that's what I'm saying. I need you to get past the emotion and actually do something about it. it. Shouldn't take you 10 years to get a breakthrough. It just shouldn't. Talk about a real tangible breakthrough where you put some boundaries in place not to be ah, 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 ah. You're not supposed to live your life in these Fs. We're gonna all visit them from time to time, but you live there. You have been running since you was 15. <laughs> And you've built the narrative that it's other people's fault. You had, you, you had four relationships in three months. And it was everybody else's fault. They was bad, and they was bad, and they was bad, and they was bad. You was bad. <laughs> Don't leave yourself. There are some people in this room that God has called to do some amazing things. You will never do them with the manufactured version of yourself. Moses went to Midian and went, I'm just going to be somebody new. I'm just going to be a shepherd. And I'm going to live a nice little lifestyle. Got my little wifey. Had my son, Gershom, my father-in-law, Ruel, is chilling. I am a Midianite. So you was a Hebrew, raised Egyptian, and now you're a Midianite? You're confused. Do you know how many people are confused? Can I be honest and say, I've been so confused. I don't know who to be no more. Because when you get traumatized, you just don't know who to be no more. Now, let me tell you something. My, my, my spiritual birthright is, is uh, uh, charismatic Pentecostal. But because I got abused in those environments, I didn't want to see it no more. Ha! I just froze. Everybody that shouted in church, ha! About to be controlled. Every time somebody started prophesying, ah! I'm about to be manipulated. So I would either freeze in it, flee from it, fight it. I'm just telling you the truth. The last few years, I just folded. I don't want to see none of that. You better not do none of it. If I see it, I'm going to fight it. 
because I'm, in, I'm a leader now. So I'm going to control the whole thing. Here's what you're not going to do. Guess what I was being informed by? Trauma. Because I actually left me there and there and there. And, there. and I'm not going to listen again. Please don't try to fill in the blanks on my narrative because it wasn't one place or one person that did this. In the last 23 years, I have shared stuff with my wife where I have been on the road preaching at places and, and I've seen some of the most abusive, toxic, manipulative stuff and they called it God and they called it church. So then God makes me a lead pastor of a church and I try to sterilize the entire atmosphere for one reason and one reason only. And I'll be honest, so I won't be triggered. And that has hurt me and it's hurt you. You don't know it, but it has. Because me trying to control and legislate everything, and then me being so triggered that, that, that if I see this and then, and, and then here, here's the truth of it. And this is what I love about God is that he loves us enough to go back and go, hey, 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 we, I'm going I'm, 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 I'm to come get you. Aren't you glad God won't leave you in a place that you think is safe? <laughs> he just can't. He, he's been coming back for me. And what he, what he told me was, uh, I just want to tell you something. Uh, you left you. You weren't the problem. That atmosphere was, go back and get you. You don't have to go back and get them. Just want to, I want to make that clear. You don't have to go back and get them, but you do have to go back and get you. Listen, when, when, when the trust was violated in the friendship, you have to go back and get the trust, not necessarily the friendship. Because you didn't do nothing wrong, right? They broke your heart. You didn't break theirs. So you got to go back and get that innocent love that you've had and you because you got to be willing to give it to somebody else. Relationships are risky. <laughs> so, so you got you, you to open up and be able to do that again. If you were the one that's responsible for it, you have to just own it and go, you know what? Here's the only reason why I couldn't be faithful to you. I'm broken. I, I, it's a long story. But it started when I was four. My dad went to the store and never came back. So, so I don't know how to stay nowhere, because he didn't. Right? He, 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 wants you to, he wants you to come back and get it. Because if you can come back and get you, then, 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 you, then you can be you. But you can't be you with pieces missing. Some of you all have tried to fill in the blanks on a jigsaw puzzle with cutouts that you've made yourself and just displayed the picture like da 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 da. It's me, new and improved, living my best life now. Sponsored by Trauma. Here's how I want you to know, and, and I'm going to close with this. God wants you to find the you that he created you to be. Now, next week is when I'll preach the message that I thought I was going to preach this week, which is called Come Get Yourself. I, I, I'm going to teach you how to come get yourself back. Because that's what he's teaching me to do right now. So, so I'm going to teach you to do it. As I'm learning, you're going to learn too. So, 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 so we're going to all do this together. But, but today I had, to, I had to slow down because some of you all have to at least acknowledge that you've left yourself in some places and you have to be bold enough to go get yourself So we're going to do just like we did last week. If this message is for you, come up here.